Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. My name is Diego and today I'm going to show you guys how to identify a phantom crested gecko and what this gene essentially does to a Corolophus ciliatus. Now this gene is really interesting and it's also really common, which means that a lot of crested geckos are either visuals or heterozygous for this gene. If you want to know if your crested gecko is a phantom or a little bit about the phantom gene in general, please stay in this video and I'll do my best to explain to you what the phantom gene does and how to identify a phantom crested gecko. So without further ado, let's go straight into the video. First of all, to understand the phantom gene, we need to understand the genetics of it. The inheritance pattern of the phantom gene is recessive. This means that you need two copies of this gene in order to get a visual phantom crested gecko. This also means that since it is one of the earliest discovered genes in the hobby, a lot of the crested geckos that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are heterozygous for the phantom gene. This means that they carry one copy of this gene and have the ability to produce visual phantom crested geckos. What phantom does is it mutes or suppresses pattern, not allowing it to be expressed in the phenotype of the crested gecko. Although it might be there in the genotype and the genes have maybe a potential tricolor or a potential lily white, that phantom gene is suppressing it, not allowing it to be shown in its full expression. Now, the main point of confusion for people is that they think that all patternless crested geckos are phantom, and this is not true. A lot of phantoms are tigers and even lower expression harlequins and quad stripes. Now, although the phantom gene can also be called patternless, it's not really correct to call it patternless because not all phantoms are patternless which makes this whole thing super complicated. It even complicates identifying some genes such as cappuccino or sables, which are more muted by the patternless or phantom gene, and therefore you can't really ID them as easily as with the crested gecko without the phantom gene. Here you can see a phantom patternless crested gecko. Here you can see a lily white crested gecko. And here you can see a phantom lily white crested gecko. As you can see, the phantom gene is really suppressing the lily white, only allowing it to show in the laterals, the tail, and a little bit of the pinstripe, opposed to the entire dorsal, sides, and tail, and even belly. So this is a classic example of how this gene can mute other genes' expression. The phantom gene can suppress a lot of other genes. However, some genes seem to not be altered at all by the phantom gene. For example, Dalmatian spots don't seem to really be affected by the phantom gene. Now this gene isn't 100% studied and we don't know exactly what it does, but we have some clues that tells us what it can also do. For example, after talking with some of my friends of the community, we have reached a conclusion that says that yellow and phantom and pinstripe can cause this mutation called margin, which is the darkening of the pinstriping of the crested gecko. As far as we can tell, there are no crested geckos that are margin and are not phantom. So all margin crested geckos are phantom as far as we can tell. But obviously not all phantom crested geckos have this margining. I would personally say that most phantoms have some visual tigering. It can either be some little speckles or dots or stripes. But I would say that most, probably like 99% of tigers are phantoms. Now I've only seen a couple tigers that are not phantoms, but a lot of the tigers that I see are actually phantoms. And a lot of these tigers also have some margining. So sometimes when people say high expression tiger, it's actually a phantom that is showing the tigering. With several generations, you can make the genes that are being suppressed by phantoms show over time. This is called the stacking. When you stack a gene over and over again, you can get it to show over the phantom gene. For example, this crested gecko is not a phantom lily white. It is actually a white wall phantom crested gecko, which is clearly not the same thing as a phantom lily white crested gecko, but it does look really similar due to the stacking of this white walling. A lot of phantoms also have portholes, which are basically white patterning that is being suppressed and is usually expressed horizontally on the crested gecko sides or laterals. In my opinion, the best combos with phantom are high tigering, lily whiting, and my personal favorite are probably snowflakes, which are these 
crazy thick bubbles of white that develop on the laterals of the crested gecko and can even go up to the dorsal of the crested gecko if it's expressed with high expression. Alright guys, I hope this video was useful and if it was, please comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.